in this video we will talk about the another congenital heart disease the ventricular septal defect to know more about the congenital heart disease and their classification watch our video on atrial septal defect when we look at the heart we have the right and the left atria at the top and the right and the left ventricles down below each of these pairs is separated by a wall called the septum the atria are separated by the atrial septum and the ventricles by the ventricular septum a VSD or a ventricular septal defect is a gap or opening in the ventricular septum after development. The septum is formed when this muscular ridge of tissues grows upwards from the apex and fuses with a thinner membranous region coming down from the endocardial cushions, creating two separate chambers, the left and the right ventricles. However, if they don't fuse, this leaves a gap in the ventricular septum called the ventricular septal defect or a VSD. So the VSD or the ventricular septal defect is an abnormal opening between the right and the left ventricles. This results in the left to right shunt. Means the blood from the higher pressure left ventricle passes through the VSD or the ventricular septal defect into the lower pressure right ventricle. The VSDs are the most common congenital heart disease. They comprise about 25% of all the congenital heart disease. Many VSDs close spontaneously but others need medical interventions. The first type is the membranous ventricular septal defect. This comprises about 80% of all the ventricular septal defects. This is the opening in the upper section of the ventricular septum called the membranous section. The muscular type includes opening in the lower section of the ventricular septum which is called the muscular region. In the outlet type, the gap is found at the structures where the blood is leaving the heart that is around the pulmonic and the aortic valve locations. And in the inlet type, this is found at the structures where blood is entering the heart around the tricuspid and the bicuspid valves. The cause in most of the congenital heart disease is unknown. The factors that increase the risk of ventricular septal defect in a child include family history of the congenital heart disease, fetal alcohol syndrome, and the genetic defects for example Down syndrome. Now the pathophysiology. Due to the abnormal opening in the ventricular septum, the blood flows from the higher pressure left ventricle to the lower pressure right ventricle which leads to volume overload to the right side of the heart. This ultimately leads to increased blood flow to the lungs because the blood flow to the lungs is from the right ventricle and the right ventricle is overloaded with the extra blood coming from the left ventricle through the VSD. This causes pulmonary hypertension and increased pulmonary vascular resistance. All this leads to hypertrophy of the right side of the heart because the right side of the heart has to push the blood against the increased pulmonary vascular resistance. Now the Eisenmenger's complex. Due to the increased blood flow to the lungs and the pulmonary hypertension, the changes occur in the pulmonary arterial bed, resulting in increased pulmonary vascular resistance. This leads to increased pressure in the right ventricle of the heart, which finally leads to a reversal of shunt. Initially in the VSD, the blood flows from the left ventricle to the right ventricle through the VSD, but in the Eisenmenger's complex or the Eisenmenger syndrome, there is a reversal of shunt, which leads to blood flow from the right ventricle to the left ventricle. And since the blood in the right ventricle is deoxygenated which mixes in the oxygenated blood in the left ventricle, this leads to delivery of the less oxygenated blood to the whole body leading to cyanosis and in Eisenmenger's complex no surgical correction is possible. The small VSDs are asymptomatic but the symptoms due to the large VSDs develop within 1-2 to two months of age and these include recurrent chest infections, heart failure, Holosystolic murmur heard best at the lower left sternal border. Tachynia which is abnormally rapid breathing. Tachycardia which is abnormally rapid heartbeat. And exertional dyspnea. The diagnostic evaluations include auscultation. Listening to the holosystolic murmur heard best at the lower left sternal border in the VSD. Chest X-ray shows enlargement of the heart and increased pulmonary vascular markings due to pulmonary hypertension. ECG reveals biventricular hypertrophy. The echocardiogram determines location, size and the severity of the ventricular septal defect. Small VSDs do not require treatment because they are asymptomatic. Treatment in the large VSDs may be palliative surgery including pulmonary artery banding. The goal of the pulmonary artery banding is to reduce pulmonary artery pressure and excessive pulmonary blood flow. A band is wrapped around the main pulmonary artery and fixed. It is then tightened, narrowing the diameter of the pulmonary artery 
to reduce the blood flow to the lungs and reduce pulmonary artery pressure. This provides symptomatic relief. Complete surgical repair includes purse string closure. This involves suturing around the opening or the ventricular septal defect and then pulling the thread to close the opening. The next is the Dacron patch closure. This involves suturing a prosthetic Dacron patch over the opening in the ventricular septum which closes the VSD. The complications include the Eisenminger syndrome which I already explained, congestive cardiac failure and the pulmonary hypertension. The nursing management focuses on monitoring the heart rate and rhythm of the patient, providing adequate rest periods to conserve the energy of the baby, and monitoring the lung sounds for crackles which indicate fluid overload, educating the parents about the risk of frequent respiratory infections, and encouraging the parents to get their uh, children vaccinated to prevent the occurrence of frequent infections. Providing preoperative care and educating the patients about the surgical procedure and what to expect and uh, this inc also includes completing all the assessment and investigations. Providing post-operative care including monitoring the vital signs, providing pain management, positioning the child, assessing the cardiovascular and the pulmonary systems and so on and monitoring the child for emergence of any complications. Finally, we need to administer the medications to the child as prescribed by the pediatrician. Thank you, that was all about the ventricular septal defect.